Um, <laughs> I am neither an information technologist nor a computational scientist, or computer scientist. I'm a geophysicist. Uh, my background is in using large-scale computational codes to solve scientific problems. And in that regard, I think it is increasingly recognized that you can either look upon it as a crisis or an opportunity, but there's, there's a crisis and an opportunity across many sciences involving computational science, which is a simple idea. We have put together most of science over the past few centuries as a combination of observation and experiment on one hand and theory and daydreaming on the other hand. Um, simulation science or computational science and engineering goes under many labels is rapidly emerging as a potential third leg if you will of of how science works and how science and engineering work however it is very rare in science and engineering that you find the kind of thoroughness and resources deployed to deal with the challenge of developing appropriate simulation science and to really realize this potential. And this, this is a problem that many institutions, many agencies, and in, in fact many groups and communities of scientists are struggling with now and will continue to struggle with, I'm sure, for decades to come. But it's an exciting new world. Uh, Berkeley is, uh, I should say Berkeley collectively, Lawrence Berkeley Lab and University of California Berkeley, are, are struggling with this as, as many other institutions. And we have many of the elements uh, that other institutions have, all, uh, perhaps unique, we're, we're awfully good at all of the essential elements that go into this. That is, we have a world-class computer science program that you're all aware of, uh, world-class applied mathematics, and world-class scientists in everything from cosmology to combustion research to climate modeling to even geophysics um, and all sorts of other fields, molecular biology, uh, uh, molecular dynamics simulation, solid state physics, people who you know you might consider consumers of, of large scale large scale computational science. And yet Berkeley, like most institutions, has not really found yet the sweet spot of bringing these fields together in a coherent fashion. And we all know the litany of problems. We have enormous legacy codes written in Fortran, started in the 60s, redone redone in the 70s to, to do vector machines and then parallelized and then there are people who start from scratch uh, and, and, and uh, usually they're better off these days. Um, there's also an issue of how we educate graduate students. The typical model for developing computational science and engineering codes, large-scale computational codes in academia has been an advisor with a small army of graduate students develops a code on the back of one or two of these graduate students. The code rarely ever is documented or validated and when the graduate student goes away, so does the code. And this is not a very good way to do business. And so many institutions, including Stanford and Davis, certainly UCLA, uh, University of Texas, have, have stepped up to meet this challenge with, with differing models. Uh, and Berkeley is, we're doing that too, and, and that's my role, and uh, I'm here more as Dean of Physical Sciences than a Computational Science in, in kind of getting the cats herded uh, at Berkeley in this area. Uh, but our, our model reflects the unique combination of resources that we have at Berkeley, and those resources are namely the academic departments that I mentioned with enormously strong uh, programs that bear on Computational Science and Engineering but also the, the nearby presence of Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory in particular, the, computation, the, computing, sciences, the computing science division there and the National Energy Research uh, Scientific Computing Center, otherwise known as NERSC, and Juan Mesa, I think, will, will speak about that. I would say we're about halfway along in a process of trying to establish a major new center for computational science and engineering at Berkeley. Uh, we're helped along by several things. One is, as Jim uh, Demel alluded to, we have essentially all the elements in place academically for a designated PhD emphasis program that is courses and, and kind of modes of behavior already uh, blending science and, and, and engineering uh, principles in large scale computation. Uh, we also um, 
are about to embark on building, fortunately, uh, a new dual-use building for computational science, kind of literally on the border between the, the campus and the laboratory. And our, uh, that building will do uh, two things. One, it will house a big machine, teraflop, mini teraflops machine for NERSC and also people. And it's on the people side that we have chosen to put our emphasis uh, with a conviction that clusters are a dime a dozen, uh, almost too easy to get in some ways, um, as Jim alluded to the hidden costs. But the essential problem of computational science is how you organize the people who write the codes. And in particular, finding a way to support these kind of computational science heroes that stand between computation, computer science and applied math on one hand and the applications people, people who actually do science and engineering with the codes on the other hand. What we envision is a, in this new building, uh, clusters of people working on projects that will vary from time to time in what, for better, want of a better word, I call kind of a computational science skunk works. And the idea is that there would be a, a fairly steady state group of senior level, mostly senior level professional computational science people, experts in everything from, from solvers to, to graphics to large-scale data resources, who would move fluidly from project to project in support of the many exciting science projects that will come and go uh, in an environment like Berkeley and Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory. So our model is a, the model that we're developing, and I'd say we're roughly halfway through kind of the internal organizational stage of this initiative at this time, is a model that will be focused on supporting a dynamic and flexible group of people who um, are probably neither going to be uh, faculty members, um, nor are they going... Uh, you know, nor is this going to be just a bunch of graduate students and postdocs huddled together, but a real professional team. Uh, my own experience is in working with a computational fluid dynamics group at Los Alamos, which has fallen on a bit of hard times recently, but was a similarly dynamic environment that supported many different projects uh, as, they, as they came and go, came and went uh, over time. And so we'll be focused on designing the building to, to enhance these kinds of relationships. We'll be focused <clears throat> on developing certain key projects, particularly in astrophysics, both experimental astrophysics, theoretical astrophysics, climate modeling, solid earth geophysics, the things we're already very good at uh, but need to uh, get better at in terms of, of developing large-scale codes. And we'll also be focused on trying to supply kind of a, a discretionary income stream that will seed new projects as old projects wane and ramp up to the level of receiving large-scale federal funding and to put a floor under the, these computational heroes, as I would say. That's, that's kind of a, a jaded word, but uh, the, the core group of people, which I think we envision a group of, of people of order, I would say at least 30 to, to 100 people, ultimately, that would be supported in, in this fashion. Um, so I'm gonna, I think I'm going to stop at that and hopefully give a little bit of a flavor for something we're really excited about. We feel like we're, that we have very strong parts at Berkeley and that the, the sum of those parts, is, is uh, uh, the whole is about to be much, much greater than the sum of those parts. I think I'll let Juan speak a little bit now about the, uh, uh, the particulars of what's going on at Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory.